Light is the left hand of darkness, and darkness the right hand of light. Two are one, life and death, lying together like lovers in kemmer, like hands joined together, like the end and the way. Well, Mr. I, you're not insane. I'm not insane. But neither of us is a king, you see. I suppose that you intended to tell Argovan rationally that your mission here is to attempt to bring an alliance between Gethin and the Ekuman. I forgot, being too interested myself, that he's a king and does not see things rationally, but as a king. All I've told him means to him simply that his power is threatened. His kingdom is a dust mote in space. His kingship is a joke to men who rule a hundred worlds. Having put you in jeopardy, I forgot what the king is. Forgot that the king in his own eyes is of necessity. The perfect patriot. Let me ask you this, Mr. I. Do you know, by your own experience, what patriotism is? No. I don't think I do. If by patriotism you don't mean the love of one's homeland, for that I do know. No, I don't mean love. When I say patriotism, I mean fear. The fear of the other, and its expressions are political, not poetical. Hate, rivalry, aggression, it grows in us, that fear. It grows in us year by year. We followed our road too far, and you, who come from a world that outgrew nations centuries ago, who hardly know what I'm talking about, who show us the new road. It's because of fear that I refuse to urge your cause with the king now. But I fear for myself, Mr. I. I'm not acting patriotically. There are, after all, other nations on Gethin. If I've understood you, Ekumen is devoted essentially to the general interest of mankind. And the common souls of Orgarin are mostly sane men, if unintelligent, while the king of Carhide is not only insane, but rather stupid. There's so much I want to know about your mind speech in particular. Of course, whenever you like. I never truly understood what Estevan meant, what his true intentions were. He only knew that Estevan had the darkest souls he had ever met and that he strongly distrusted him. The news of Estevan's exile only solidified his detestation towards him.
It's the Ekman's custom. I thought it was for Gethin's sake that he came alone, so obviously alone, so vulnerable, that he could by himself pose no threat, change no balance, not an invasion but a mere messenger boy. But there's more to it than that. Alone he cannot change the world, but he can be changed by it. Alone he must listen as well as speak. Alone the relationship he makes is personal, it is both more and less than political. Not we and they, not I and it, but I and thou. Estrovan often wondered why I was ashamed of crying. I told him that it was not shame so much as fear. The fear of losing his identity. To that, Estrovan is known to have replied, Fear is very useful, like darkness, like shadows. The screen at daylight's not enough. We need the shadows in order to walk. It is then I drew out a sign and showed it to Estrovan, a symbol well known in his world. I explained that it is found on earth and on Hain Devenant and on Shifwar. It is yin and yang. Light is the left hand of darkness. The representation of light, dark, fear, courage, cold, warmth, female, male. It is one self, both in one, a shadow on snow. Even after his exile, Estrovan's devotion to Carhide never changed. I wondered not for the first time what patriotism is, what the love of country truly consists of, how that yearning loyalty that has shaken his voice arises, and how so real a love can become, too often so foolish and vile a bigotry. Where does it go wrong? On the evening of Estrovin's death, in the cold country that lied beyond fear, I found that you could weep all you like but there's no good in it. It is also this moment he finally realized the true meaning of his name and his existence. I, as the participant, the envoy sent into Gethin. Cry of pain and sorrow, the non-verbal cry of the human soul, of the isolation, of the fear of the other, and of self-awareness. I, as an observer who sees, understands and accepts, in the irony of his blindness that let his prejudice get the better of him. And finally, I, as in love.